Well, good morning. Look at you, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, ready to go, so many pieces. What a fabulous day we're going to have today. 21 baptisms. Isn't that exciting when we have to cut and trim and move and play Tetris with all of the pieces to get everything in? And that's what's so exciting about being a part of a great church. And of course, we have some Saskatchewan Rough Riders fans here today. Wow! Uh, especially when we're talking about faith. Perfect! Perfect! I can't see a, but a better illustration than that. Last week, David introduced uh, a series on Abraham, and we were exploring the language of blessing. And this morning, I want to return to the verses that we started with last week in Genesis 12, 1 to 4. It's an amazing text for us to look at together. It says this, The Lord had said to Abraham, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. And I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. And you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went as the Lord had told him. And Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. I want you to notice the final sentence here. Because that's what we're focusing on this morning. Abraham went. Abraham went. I want you to think about that for a moment. The story begins with a God who talks, a God who blesses, and a God who promises. But then there's this little phrase at the bottom that we need to spend some time with, the idea of movement, of going, of stepping out. Going anywhere outside of your own personal comfort is an adjustment. I want to pause right there. Some of you get this, some of you don't, but it's true for all of us. Going anywhere outside of your personal comfort is an adjustment, and that can be different for each one of us. Some of you this morning, if, if, if all of a sudden my voice and all of the other communicators were unable to present today, and we invited you to join on the stage and to pick up the clicker and read through and teach this morning you would have cardiac arrest because that is outside of your comfort zone. Others are praying for the moment to happen. I know, you just want to be a part of this. There are things for us that we are comfortable doing and we are not comfortable doing. One of our staff members, I can't remember who it is, is a hill runner. I think he was beside me this morning. He sends me pictures and texts of running up mountains I used to motocross bike up and down mountains. That was silly enough. But running? Completely out of my comfort zone. Going takes courage. Going builds faith. And Abraham, he led us in this special way. Now, I have to tell you, this week, the most amazing thing happened to me. Some of the uncomfortable pieces that we walk through or the going or the stepping into for me, it was a conversation this week. And I have conversations every day with every types and all types of people. This week, I got into one that I could not even imagine. This was a conversation that so many other people could have that I could not have. And I would not have gone off after this conversation. But somebody was listening while I was talking to my children. We were arguing about how much pumps you can have in a Starbucks drink. And this wonderful man stepped in and took my side against a teenager. Which opened up the door to talk about no God, no religion, no commitments. I gotta be honest, after we started in this conversation, I was kind of chuckling. He didn't know who he was talking to. And as we got into it, I thought, this is going to end very abruptly. This is maybe not going to go well and I'm going to run out the door, or he's going to run out the door. But either way, this is going to be short and sweet. Two hours later, two hours of conversation. And I'm telling you this morning, I was not equipped for this conversation. Everything he asked, I had no information on. I was not prepared. But God, in a beautiful way, just opened up a chance for us to be together. These are the pieces of going. And for me, this week, I thought, wow, stepping out, Going somewhere, that's where I never would have wanted to go. At least not alone. 
Many of you here can relate to this story, whether it's a conversation, a moment, a stage of life, that this going peace is a radical step. Maybe for all of us, uh, especially for me, our newest philosopher that our kids are loving uh, possibly is Dustin from Stranger Things. And what he says is the way I get it. Why are you keeping the curiosity door locked? Why? Because there's something about the if that makes us go, I wonder what could happen. There's something about stepping out into new areas. Now, for some of you, I know this is very, very troubling right away. For others, let's think for a moment. What would happen if our curiosity gets tweaked and we start to see something different? This morning, water baptism, this is a brand new step. And I can guarantee you, as our video shared with us earlier, your life will never be the same again. This is a brand new step of going that will change everything. In going, faith takes trust in God and faith forces us to hold and to squeeze the hand of God just a little bit tighter. Do you remember those days early on in your life? You're a little kid and you're hanging on to one of your parents' hand and you get a little nervous and you can feel them there and that's pretty good. But then when the nerves start to go, you just hang on a little tighter. Maybe for you it's at another location in life. Maybe it's the way your spouse drives and you hang on to the handle just a little bit tighter. A discipleship for the Christ follower is this repetitive motion of stepping out, going, and allowing our faith to change at each and every interval. Don't keep the curiosity door locked. Today, if you could leave with one thought, don't leave the door locked of what the possibilities that could happen through God and through stepping out. Thomas uh, Cahill says it this way, Abraham went are, the two, are two of the boldest words in literature. They're easy to miss, but the whole story, the whole picture of God's salvation story kicks into actions with these words, this phrase, he went. So here's our lesson from these words today. Our response matters. Our response, it matters. God's plans are waiting for your response. God is ready to move and is doing things all over the place, but he's waiting. Because he loves to include us in on that. Abraham's response is bold. And if we think for a moment and we walk through these pieces, we will understand why it was so bold. All of us today have come with things that God is asking. For, for some, there's relational repair. There are things right now that you need to wrestle through. There are pieces from a relationship standpoint that you have to sort. But you're not quite ready yet. Sometimes it's just forgiveness. You're stuck because something offended, something went wrong, and you know it. You know. Some of you, even looking around the corner of Christmas, you're going to have to see that person that offended you last year. And you're married to them, and it was a bad gift choice, and we had no idea what they were doing. And they didn't come to us who shop, but you are going to have to face them Christmas morning again. Sometimes it's generosity. God is wanting to use the gifts that we have. Some of it's, it's commitment, different connections. But each piece requires us to move, to go. Movement in God's direction is bold, and our response to God is all about being bold and moving forward. Let's unpack a few pieces of stories, and then we're going to move into one of the most boldest, beautiful moments of baptism. Abraham didn't know where he was going, but he went anyways. Abraham didn't know where he was going, but he went anyways. Does this sound like your family holiday? There are people that just wander. They just climb in the car and away they go because you never know the opportunities that are in front of them. The rest of us, that would be, wow, very, very stressful. But God said to him, we're going to go. You're going to go to a land that I will show you. Trust me. God says, go. And the where to, the rest of the pieces are going to come together later. I want to ask you a question about this because this is helpful because I feel I'm going to ask this of me so you get to be a part of it. Are you able to live in a way that can allow you to move without all the pieces in play? Are you actually able to live in a way 
that doesn't have to have all the pieces in front of you. That's a hard piece. That's a wrestle. We often want the whole plot of the story before we step out. We want to see every bit and we want to understand how that's going to work. And then we want to make our decision. The reason baptism for me is so powerful is there's an obvious part in this, especially when we look at Jesus when he said, repent, be baptized, because there's something on the other end of baptism that you do not know. That I can guarantee you, you do not know. And that's what makes it so special. This can be very unnerving, but it is where faith is built. This is where faith is built. I was telling my kids this week, we were talking about the first time I ever um, interviewed at a church. And I remember it was a church of about 600 people and I was there as their youth uh, candidate. And she said to me, have you ever spoken on a stage? And I said, "Uh, no. And she said, have you ever given your testimony in a group? And I said, no. Uh, she, and she had a whole list of which her last response was, best of luck, I'll bail you out after 10 minutes. You're going to be a wreck, but it'll be beautiful. There's something about that first step of faith when you think of your careers in those moments in sales, your first sale, the first time you said, I think I can do this, but it's unnerving. But now you look back and what else would happen? Because you are developed and growing in your faith. God said, I will show you. I will show you where. Faith has never been about staying in comfort. It's about going and being uncomfortable in your surroundings, but sensing that God is with you here at our church. It's what I love. Pumpkin worship nights, art gala for women in exploitation, Ruth hands, food for those in need, water tubs, sober stories of faith, 8.30 Sunday morning services with kids and youth. Nothing comfortable about it. Nothing comfortable. I will show you where. And in hearing God speaking today, whatever situation you're in, understand that God will show you where. Sometimes I think for all of us when it comes to faith, we, uh, we, you do what I do. You measure the degrees of what could go wrong. This is the Superman ride outside of San Francisco. This was the ride that our family decided that we all need to go on. All as a family. We all need to go on this. I stared at it. I've done roller coasters before. It's metal. Metal's better than wood. It is 90 degrees. And I was good with everything. How the magnets fire you up. How the magnets stop you at the end. But there was one piece right at that very top where they hold you rocking back and forth, upside down, 115 feet over uh, Superman. I know that Superman's possibly not real. And I know if I fall out of the cart, he may not catch me. And I also know that Heather can't hold me. I watched it and watched it and watched it. And finally, I climbed in. And I was right. The 115 feet over the ground and being held on by your thighs is terrifying. When we got back down, I went, we just got to do it again. There's something about us in the measurement to say, I see how the start is. I see how the end is. I think I can do this. However, progressiveness or progress always involves risks. As Frederick Wilcox said, you can't steal second with your foot on first base. There's always a risk involved. And great memories are always going to be found in going. I've yet to see an amazing family holiday photo that, hey, pastor, look at this great shot. This year, we all went to the couch. It was amazing. It's not how it works. Abraham wasn't in control, but he went. He was not in control, but he went. Verse 2 and 3, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. With God in control, he does the making, not Abraham. God does the making. Trying to be in control will stop you from going. Our solo control could take us in the wrong direction. Jesus operated like this. He called people who were willing to be out of control. He called people who are willing to be out of control. Now practice this. Turn to the person beside you and say, I get it. You're out of control. 
Just try it, just try it right now, try it. Say, I get it. You're out of control. Doesn't that feel great? When you think, one of my favorite stories, the Pool of Bethesda, the man who was, was ill and lying and waiting, Jesus came to him and says this part of the text, do you want to be healed? He's laying at the side of the pool. He's got all these issues. And Jesus says, do you want to be healed? Pick up your bed. You see, he was in control. He, he Even though he physically couldn't do what, was he, what he felt needed to be done, he was looking for his way, his understanding. Maybe it's possible that this paralyzation he was suffering was because of his own order, his own pieces that he thought had to take place. And as a result, he laid there unhealed. And Jesus said, do you want to be healed? Maybe our control is paralyzing the future that God has planned for us. Maybe our control is keeping us from God has planned all along. Abram went God's way. When we go, we change our setting. When we change our setting, we change our comfort. And when we change our comfort, everything changes. We all have it. We have old clothes. We have old cars. We have old tools. We have old books. We have old places. We have our old standby. Our old standby. And we have our go-to. It's just the one we go to. We, we all have it in all different ways and shapes and forms. I want to challenge you this year, and, and this is early. This year, in the season of Christmas and the excitement of everything going down, I want you to consider doing something to practice this control piece. Do something that makes no sense. Something that is out of control. Do something with your family. Do a family serve. Maybe you've never done that. Do an unexpected gift for an undeserving person. That's out of control. It makes perfect sense to give a gift to someone who you want to get a gift back from or to give a gift to someone that you know will give you a bigger gift. These all make sense. I want you to think through this year, early in, what could you do that would radically shock your home or the people around you? In fact, Dad, what about this year? You cook the morning Christmas dinner or breakfast. Some of you have never walked in the kitchen other to pick up the coffee that has been made for you. This year, mess it up. Do something different. Do something that proves that you can lose control in a moment. Abraham was 75 when he went. Verse 4, he was 75 years old when he set himself out. Question for us today is, what is the right age to go? What is the right age to step out of your comfort zone and commit and try something new? To be water baptized, what is the right age? Boy, we talk about this all the time. What is the right age? Abram puts us all on the hook. His story opens with a story that we're never too old. We are actually never too old. 75, gosh, you, gotta, you must be done by then. You've worked hard, you've served, you've been ushers, greeters, singers, leaders in the church. You must be done by 75. That makes common sense. Not in this story, not in this story. I do not think that God works in this age paradigm for we have so much reference to understanding faith and the only way you get it is the faith of a child. And then if you don't get it for the faith of the child, let's try the faith of a 75-year-old. A lot of space in between. God works in spite of these age limits. He calls us at all ages to step out and to go. Abraham went out at 75 years old. Maybe the older people get it right. I know some of you don't like that, but maybe the older people get it right. This week, or last Sunday, I had a chance to be with a family. Mom is 87 years old. And she's got a few weeks to be with us. She was in hospice. And I got to be beside her bed and I rubbed her beautiful hand and I said, Hazel, you are just a special person. Thank you for serving God for so many years. I said, I still have time to find out which one of the kids you had to pray more for as the kids were all around the bed. She chuckled and she turned and she said, you're a handsome minister. I now think the old people have it right. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Her eyes were gone. But listen, the bottom line, 
Maybe the old people have it right. Age and brilliance altogether. There's something that's happening in our church over the last few years I want to tell you that is amazing. People that are hitting the stride of life when they should be pulling back, relaxing, letting go and be less busy are turning a right hand turn and they're going right for what God has for them. And they are launching into brand new areas of what God has called them in their life. We're going to unpack some of those stories in the weeks and months to come. Older there's something about being more resourced in your faith and your wisdom, your connections, your callings. You may start to lose your hearing at an older age, but I will inform you that your heart is attuned and attentive to what God is hearing and saying and speaking. When Paul talks about Abram in Romans 4, 17, 18, he notes about Abraham went out against all hope, believing in a God who gives life to death. It's not over till God says it's over. God's time is the right time, and I had to just give this to you this morning. We have to let go of the stigma, the age stigma. While he was visiting, my father asked for the password to our Wi-Fi. It's taped under the modem, I told him, and after three failed attempts to log on, log on he asked, am I spelling it right, T-A-P-E-D? <laughs> but we still have to get rid of the age concerns. Don't worry about your age. God's timeline is never ours, and as a church, we need to fight against the lies about retirement. It's never over until God says so. God says 75 is the new 25. God says 75 is the new 25. Don't let millennials beat you to the punch. Keep moving on what God is doing. It's a beautiful scene. In fact, maybe at 74, you're just not old enough. Who knows? God knows. He watches over us. We have to let go of the control. We have to be willing to go. Go because we don't even know. Go because we don't even see it. Go because God's timing is perfect. In closing today, Abraham went. And when God calls us to go, we got to go. We have to go because there's room for more people to receive God's grace. We have to make space for those who have not yet sensed God's care and ability to restore their pain and their brokenness. And we have to go so we can see a difference and we can make a difference in others.